Okay. Okay, so the spot rate is what we've just talked about. Now we need to know what the forward rates are. Now, he's concerned about currency risk on the transaction, so he hedges this risk by entering a forward buy contract at the 1st of May. So it happens at this point. And at which point, under which he agrees to purchase $100,000 US on the 30th of July, so this point, at an agreed rate of 1 AUD is 0.9239. Okay. There are a couple of typos. I'll just pick up another one. There's a couple of typos here. Um, no cash changes hands at the inception, at the inception of... Uh, at the inception of the forward. So what we've got here is, I think I know where I've made the typo. So there are two typos which come up, not in this section. So the rates we have are AUD USD 30 July forward rates. Uh, so 102 and Now it makes sense that those converge and they may in reality not converge absolutely to the same point. But this is you're getting, your, your futures contract is to get $100,000 US on the, 30th of July, on the 30th of July. When you're actually at the 30th of July, you're actually paying, you'd be buying that forward to get the, the currency right now. So it should actually be the same number. Um, you should see at the date that the forward is for, that those two numbers actually pretty much match up. Now, the two typos which exist, and they're not major ones, <coughs> make sure that they're good everywhere else, is looking through the working. The first one is, that should be the payable. I'm looking at it during this morning's, and that should be the receivable. So instead of receivable on the forward and payable on the forward, that should just be payable receivable. All the numbers all work out. And the other typo is that I've just put in the wrong number here. These numbers all these numbers are the correct ones. So they would have actually set it up. This should actually be 0 0.0200. So uh, apologies for that. I think I was thinking about it as as, it, <coughs> as I was going through it. So I will put up an announcement that these, about that error and about those two. But regardless, what we have is count the situation. Okay, so when we set this, <coughs> excuse me, so when we set this forward up, what we've done is a contract, and it's not one you can just walk away from. So we have a contract set up on the 1st of May, <coughs> and what that's saying is on the 1st of May, we know that on the 30th of July, we are going to receive an asset. We know that's going to happen. We are going to receive an asset, and that asset in this case is $100,000 in cash. We know that that is what happens. We also know <coughs> that we are going to pay a certain amount of cash for that when that happens. And the amount of cash we're going to pay is based on the $100,000 US that it's worth and adjusting it for that forward rate, which is <coughs> the forward rate when we set it up is 1.02. So the forward rate at that point in time, and what we're going to be paying is $100,000 at one Aussie equals 102. We're going to be paying 98,039 
Australian dollars in about three months' time. That's what we know is going to happen. What we also know is going to happen is we are going to receive $100,000 US in three months' time. And so what we need to do is to value that 100,000 US in Australian dollars. So the best way to think about this is we're not receiving cash, we're receiving an asset. And that asset is something we need to value. And we come up with a value of that asset based on what the forward rates are. And so at this point in time, it's the same forward rate. What we are receiving is an asset. So if you think about this, this as an asset. We are receiving $100,000 US in cash in three months. The forward rate for that cash is 102. We are receiving an asset of $98,000 in three months. We can ignore, technically there would be discounting involved in a lot of these, just to make the computations a little bit simpler and because this is only three months, we're just ignoring that for the moment. But we have a payable of 98, we have a receivable of 98, they net out and you're allowed to net these out. It's zero we don't show anything. So on the 1st of May, we don't show a thing for this forward. What then happens is we get to the 31st of May, and I'm just going to do this one and then we'll look at the entries, where we've stepped along and we're at this point in time. We are still going to receive an asset and we're still going to pay cash. The amount of cash we're going to pay is locked in. We know that we're paying $98,000 because that is the, the agreement that we have. We're paying at 102. So that 98,039, that is an absolute, we know that. What we also know with absolute certainty is that we are going to receive $100,000 US in cash in now two months time. But what has changed are the forward rates. And the forward rate from 102 has come down to 95. So the receivable, what that US is now worth, is 105,263. The net of the payable and the receivable is now 7,224. 7 We've gone from zero to 7,224. This is on the positive side of things. And if you remember way back when we were looking at what a financial asset is, is if you can, one of the things we're talking about, if you can, if in the contractual arrangements of receiving and paying cash, you're going to be better off, I've paraphrased somewhat there, then it's a financial asset, which is exactly what's happened here. If this contract now is good for us, it's up by $7,000. <clears> you do the same thing at the 30th of June, $98,000 payable versus $109,000 receivable. The fair value is 11. The change is about 4,500. You go to the 30th of July, 98 to 108. It's 10,000. It's come back by about $1,600. So we're getting, we know the value of the payable. We're working out the value of the receivable, taking the net and running that through. 